guys, welcome back to the channel, Nays Pink Bookshelf. My name is Nays Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and today's video, as the title says below, is going to be my March and April book haul. Now, I am missing three books, um, but they're on the way and they won't really be here until Thursday, and I just don't want to wait that long. So, yeah. Um, but I wanted to get these out of the way because I really want to clean my room. I want to clean up my bookshelves, but I can't really do that if I don't haul these books and put them up. I don't like to put books up before I haul them because if I put them up, then I forget to haul them. So um, I normally just stack them up and then th this has gone over the top. Um, it's two months worth of books. This is not all of the books. I'm not including my nonfiction books in this haul. So yes. Um, so we're going to start with my Christian books first and then get into my non-christian books but before i do i do want to share that i got some more of my favorite tabs ever these sticky tabs i use um it's a bulk of 3600 pieces from amazon and one thing i love well one thing i don't like excuse me is that they changed this this used to be indigo but now they switched this to another kind of purple i'm not sure why they did that but um i love these tabs there's a variety of tabs you have the really thin tabs you have your arrows you have your squares you have the chunky monkey ones and then you have some fun ones in here as well that are like different colored ones i think those are so cool so yes i'm excited to have another pack of these i go through these all the time so i try to make sure that i always have like two or three backups before i run out but um that is that so we're gonna get into this we're gonna start off with my biblical fiction books um if you guys don't know i am a christian I'm also an, an evangelist at my church, so I do enjoy Christian fiction, biblical fiction, all of that stuff. I do have a separate channel, so if you guys are interested in checking that out, you can click the on the screen to go to that channel. But over here, we talk about books or genres. So we're going to start off with biblical fiction. So I think this is, this is the only book I haven't read yet. So this one um, I got in a book box called the Delilah Box, and it is a Christian woman's book box that focuses on um, lesser-known women of the Bible. So this is Daughter of Cana by Angela. Angela Hunt is the first book in Jerusalem Road. This is actually her newest release, her latest release. I have enjoyed the, I read two books from Angela Hunt, but I own, I think, about seven or eight of her books. I think nine, including this one now. But um, Daughter of Cana, it follows a twin. What is her name? Tasman. She is the twin sister of um, Thomas, who followed Jesus. And this takes place during the time of the wedding at Cana when Jesus turned water into wine. And it is her story following her brother, trying to save her brother because she was not a believer. And I'm super, super excited for this book. I can't wait to read it. And I think the cover is like stunning and gorgeous. So we have that. Following that, we have the rest of the books, which I've already read, okay? So I have Land of Silence by Tessa Abshaw. I have read this. I loved it. It gave five stars. Phenomenal book all the way. I received an extra copy because I was a part of her launch team for her latest release, which was Daughter of Rome. And we were able to pick one of her previously released novels. And I went with this one because this was one of my favorites from her um, previous books. So, yeah, we have this and i'm definitely going to be giving this away on my other channel to someone but um i think this is amazing it's, like i said the, the story of the daughter it's the story of the woman with the issue of blood and it's well written the main character's name is eliana and she goes through a lot of heartache and a lot of heartbreak and betrayal and just it's, it's hard what she goes through but the way she comes out on the end is phenomenal she's a strong strong woman loved it five stars following that we then have another five star read of course like flames in the night now i do have two copies of this book okay two copies this copy i actually got from the publisher i was a part of the launch team for this book tabbed it up i love this series so much this one i got in the book box that i was just talking about the delilah box this one was my march book and then the daughter of cana was my april book um, so I'll leave the Delilah box information down below, but this is the fourth and final book in the Cities of Refuge series by Connie Lynn Cassette. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal conclusion. I'm so sad that it's over. Um, she is definitely one of my favorite biblical fiction authors. I definitely would have to say it would be Tessa Afshar, the author of this novel, would be like my number one ultimate favorite biblical fiction author. And then Connie Lynn Cassette is literally after her. Um, her writing is phenomenal. This book really pieced together all the other books in the series, as well as one of the books from her trilogy that she wrote. I loved it. It was phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Um, it is dealing with a young woman named Terza. She is the daughter of the main characters from the first book. Can't really get into it because the other books really talk about the, the family lineage. But um, she becomes a female spy to help uh get back the land that belongs to the Hebrews. And it was phenomenal and I loved it and it was gorgeous and I loved the romance. The romance is what got me because it, the, the, the son 
the guy that she was with tied into the final book from her trilogy and it was just beautiful the way she wove it together her writing is phenomenal loved it but again i will be giving this copy away i don't need two copies of that um another five star read that i read star purger i recently read this star purger by joe eileen smith recent release this was phenomenal five star read it is the story of esther queen esther um and king xerxes or ahasuerus if you go by his biblical hebrew name but basically xerxes and it is beautifully written i enjoyed it it was gorgeous and uh, tabbed it moving on <laughs> um then i'm not sure if i hauled this or not but i'm gonna share it because i think i picked this up back in February but I don't think I did a February book haul I'm not sure but um this is Sons of Encouragement by Francine Rivers this is a bind up of her five novellas which focused on um Aaron the priest Caleb the warrior Jonathan the prince Amos the prophet I think that is what it's called the prophet let me just make sure I'm getting the right titles here the prophet and then the scribe Silas um so we have that this like I said is a bind up of her novella so it is like 700 pages long but um the book actual books itself are like 150 pages 170 pages um and even then the actual stories are less than that because um this also includes sections of a bible study inside so we have that okay so moving on to my other christian fiction books that are not biblical okay so I'm gonna start with historical I have two historicals three contemporaries and a fantasy so the first one i on the, actually these two i honestly know nothing about honestly um this one is called woman of sunlight it's the second book in the brides of hope mountain by mary connell connie connie Lynn, connelly so, excuse me mary connelly um i'm not gonna lie i requested this for review because the cover looked cool there was no other reason it looked cool and i want to get into more historical fiction but i want to so more so read it in the christian genre because i'm finding that i'm enjoying those a lot more than regular historical fiction so yeah and it looks like a tiny read um so yeah it says he's seen the entire country she's never been off her mountain home when danger comes this unlikely couple will need to rely on each other so yeah it sounds interesting and um, i'm gonna give it a try and hopefully the best comes um what is this oh this was in here so i got this from the actual publishing company didn't know oh no wait i think i won this on goodreads <laughs> now that i'm thinking about it because it says congrats on winning i think i won this so this was not the request i think they sent me a request for the first one and i denied it but i signed up for goodreads for the sequel i think that's what it was so yeah it says congratulations on winning this novel yeah so i won this book excuse me one is on goodreads I'm trying to figure out what that was so this was a goodreads one <laughs> all right and then the other one was a arc that i received from thomas nelson this is a socialite by this person here i'm not going to attempt to pronounce that name don't want to get it wrong but um this is historical fiction that deals with espionage that it says glamour treachery and romance collide when an english socialite throws herself into the dangerous arms of nazi occupied paris um so yeah I think Kat goes to look for her little sister because her little sister goes to Paris and um, some things ensue, deals with the Nazis, socialites. I'm here for it. I requested it. Um, I did request this specifically for an Instagram tour, which I did do, um, but I still do definitely want to read this book myself. So we have that. Then we're going to move on to contemporary. So the first one I have is another book from um, Thomas Nelson. This is also an arc, also received for an Instagram tour, which I've done already. It's called The Joy of Falling by Lindsay Harrell. And what I remember from the synopsis is that it follows two women um, after the loss of their husbands. Their husbands died, I think, doing something crazy. Yeah, they died in a scuba dive an accident because they were thrill seekers so they died in that um and i think these two women are trying to like deal with that grief they bond um i think they do a marathon yeah they train for a marathon and in doing so they meet uh mark who was the best friend of one of the husbands and then the other woman meets a guy named simon and i'm guessing it's just them coming to to terms with the depths of their husbands learning to love themselves again and then love others and be loved again so it seems like it's going to be a cute romantic read a little bit of heartbreak in here but i'm super excited for this following that i have a contemporary romance called before i called you mine by nicole dc now i do have two copies of this okay the problem is i got this from the actual publishing company because i signed up for the tour this i got for an actual like blog tour review program that i was a part of so i have two copies so this will be going away of course <laughs> 
but um yeah it follows lauren bailey and joshua um and i believe they deal with uh i think it's special needs kids or just an adoption in general adoption place in general um it sounds like it's going to be heartwarming and touchy and everything like that this did come with a little red bracelet but i have no idea what mine's went because it has to do with like the red string um it has to do with adoption and the red string so i don't really know like the full depth of it but um the author talked about it in the note yeah the red thread is um Inten yeah, it's a so the red thread is the international symbol for adoption so it deals with um adoption so i don't know it just sounds like really really cool fun cool fun it just sounds really good to read so we have that moving on we have stay with me by becky wade it's the i think the first novel in her misty river romance i think this is the first novel I believe so so we have this and it follows um a bible study author named genevieve woodward and a guy named sam turner who is um the owner of a historic farm and i'm i'm ex I, I basically guess that there's like some family secrets going on they dislike each other have to work together in the end and fall in love pretty much like how i normally see it but this cover is gorgeous it's gorgeous i love it so we have that um and i think the last christian sort of book that i have is this christian fantasy i've read this book five started love the entire trilogy the trilogy itself is like my favorite ever and that is going to be cry of the raven by morgan l bussey it's the third and final book in the ravenwood saga this is christian fantasy i love it i enjoyed everything about this book but this is not a wrap up so yeah i didn't tab it up because i read the e-arc of this i did a reading vlog on my other channel as well but this was amazing i love the cover i think the cover is stunning it's simple it's simplistic and um it's it gives you that fantasy feel i love the fact that this is christian fantasy because you get those faith aspects you get the scriptures involved in it but you also get to have the magical powers and the world building and things like that so this is like epic and this actually kind of like made me like crows because the main character's ability oh and again the the powers that they have all are based on elements sort of kind of um the main guy his ability has to do with water and lady celine is the main female character she is a dreamwalker and it also it so with that it kind of gave me um strange dream of vibes but it was a little bit more interesting for me so i enjoyed this a lot okay then i have two classics um these are two classic novels and one I've already read before several times in high school and middle school and that's going to be Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen but what I like about these classics is that they are written by a woman named Karen Swallow Pryor in which she really dives in and she explains the stories from a Christian perspective. Again, I am Christian non-denominational. Um, so I thought that was epic because I do enjoy Jane Austen's writing and I know that Jane Austen was a Christian So just to have this type of book for me as a Jane Austen fan as well as a Christian To get to really see what Jane Austen was thinking as a Christian when she wrote this and to really get an understanding um, In the book at the, there are footnotes and I haven't fully gone through it But there are footnotes and there are questions I think after every other section and things like that um, I think the book itself is well done um, this book is how many pages 514 pages long okay yeah so right now she only has two out there will be two more coming soon which I am so stoked for and I hope I can get those again I did receive both of these for review um, from B&H Publishers okay which is a Christian book company that works with Lifeway um, so yeah she has two other ones go coming out actually i'm sure it's like three others coming out but right now i have the two that are out so like i said sense and sensibility gray with silver foiling they do come with satin bookmarks i do however wish the bookmarks were a little bit bigger um but they're fine for me obviously i like the thickness of the paper because that means i can really go in and annotate i'm annotating the mess out of this i do have sense and sensibility already but i'm gonna annotate the mess out of this one so we have that um, and then another one that I have is Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, again by Karen Swallow Pryor. Um, it's the actual story with her um, helping you read the book as a Christian and things like that. Um, and here's what that looks like. I did not know anything about this. I did look up reviews on YouTube and Goodreads and heard really great things about it. So I'm super, super excited. Um, again, she starts out with a note to the reader at the beginning. She gives you an introduction to everything. Um... As far as like the author, the background of the work with the author, 
the form of the work she really dives in for a good 20 odd pages she gives you things she gives you what you need to know reading it as a christian today um she really goes in i'm trying to see if there's anything else she gives you before she dives into the story yeah so like this these right here these 30 some odd pages are like introductory information and then i saw that in between each part there was a reflections questions so um that is super exciting now she will have like i said other books she's gonna do frankenstein which i'm excited for jane eyre which i'm excited for in the scarlet letter i have read all of them except for this one and frankenstein i have read sense and sensibility i've read um jane eyre and i've also read the scarlet letter so to have those i'm super excited for it so i have the first two can't wait for the others but those are classics so we're gonna move on to now my other books my fantasy because mainly got nothing but fantasy here so most of these are like repurchases so i'm gonna start off with the one that i really really had to buy because like i had to buy it and like i wouldn't be me without buying it she is one of my favorite authors now her writing a little problematic can be trash at times but i enjoy it okay i feel like it's a guilty pleasure for me and that is going to be sarah j moss I purchased my book, um, House of Earth and Blood, first book in the Crescent City. I think it was a trilogy or a series, I'm not sure. I think it might be a series. Um, I hope it's a series. But I have not read it, Urban Fantasy, and I am stoked. I've watched so many reading vlogs, so many book reviews, spoilery, non-spoilery, didn't matter. Um, some people have a problem with this, some don't. I like Sarah J. Moss's writing. Um, I know that this is not as um, over the top as... Her A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is literally my favorite series from her. I love the A Court of Thorns and Roses, the original trilogy. Love that. Um, Throne of Glass. I honestly gave up with Throne of Glass when Tower of Dawn came out because I'm not a fan of Kale. But um, I'm excited for this and I love the end pages. I love the cover. I know that they have the all red one with the red um, sprayed edges, but I think I'm, I might just do red sprayed, red sprayed edges myself. But um, I really like this. I did get my book off of amazon and i will be reading it this month for um tom tapu so i'm excited to be diving in i already got my book like set um put into section so i'm stoked can't wait everything and more baby look, look at that cover she is stunning i love it so we have that all right put that over there then we're gonna dive into the books that i've oops, sort of kind of read so i wasn't going to get this series honestly i was just gonna read the ebooks but i find that i actually do enjoy the first book and i want to continue on because i know there's the fourth book coming out or it came out already so um that's an ember in the ashes by salva tahir so i read this book when it first came out five started it, loved it don't remember honestly what happens in the story so i wanted to get physical copy so i did get the first and the second book on ebay so we have an ember in the ashes and a torch against the night i did get this off of ebay it came with a little card from the guy i got it from and um they're pretty much in good condition i think they look great um and i can't wait to have them on my bookshelves um so yeah i'm gonna be actually reading this this month for the asian readathon that's why it's tabbed so we're gonna put that over here and then take this book here Alrighty, now we're getting into, <laughs> honestly, I don't know why I did this to myself. I know why I did this to myself. So the next author, literally, I have like her books just here. So the next author, right? So here's the thing. I've read all of her books, all of one of her series, gave five stars. Then I read one of her trilogies. I think I gave one book a three star and one book a four. I never finished it. Um, and then I started the other trilogy, read one book. I think I gave it like a four and a half, four stars. But then I'm like, hmm. I have the first book of her other trilogy so maybe I should just go and get the actual books of her books if I just made any sense so I'm talking about Cassandra Clare guys <laughs> I have read almost every Cassandra Clare book almost um and I also have three more books of hers coming in the mail okay so not just including these I think this is nine books here right nine I have 10 11 12 so I have 12 total books okay 13 because I have one on my bookshelf already from her but yeah I don't think I'm gonna buy her um her like novella bind up thingies I don't I don't know if I want to get it I might buy the Bane Chronicles but I heard the Shadow Hunters Market or whatever it's called Shadow Hunters Academy Shadow Hunters Market I'm really not sure um I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy those two the Bane Chronicles I am debating on getting because I do like Magnus but um 
yeah so i'll just let you guys know now i do have chain of gold coming this week i also have lord of shadows and queen of air and darkness coming in the mail because i already own lady midnight and i read that um but yeah we have that okay all right so we have the first trilogy infernal devices so i got it off of ebay of course um the only gripe with this is that two of the covers are slightly damaged it doesn't bother me honestly it really doesn't so i got clockwork angel i think i gave this book three three and a half stars if i'm not mistaken um i i don't remember anything about it honestly not gonna lie but when i did buy it um this was ripped it doesn't really bother me per se so if i really do um care enough i will go and repurchase it but um it, it, it honestly i'm not a stickler for my library looking completely put together honestly um it's okay it's my i, I don't it doesn't bother me so yeah um then we have clockwork prints this one was actually a collector's first edition right yeah so this is a collector's first edition um and is this the one or is it the other one yes the other one so this one apparently includes an exclusive story of tessa and jim's first meeting um this cover was nothing wrong with it at all i just wiped it down um all my books now when i get it off of ebay and amp um yeah when i buy my, all my books off of ebay i immediately wiped them down with alcohol so this one just had some stains that i cleaned off but there was nothing wrong with it so we have clockwork prints read this i think this is the one i gave four stars so that i did enjoy and then we have this last one clockwork princess i this was the only one i didn't read this cover was fine but um i noticed that it had like some slash marks and it doesn't bother me um this is also a collector's first edition if you can see but this one also has this pretty um kind of family tree in it so that's cool but we have that okay and then i bought the um mortal instruments because i love the mortal instruments i've seen the city of bones movie i have seen the mortal instruments series um love the series i actually slacked off i think on the last like two or three seasons i need to binge watch the series over but i loved each and every book gave it five stars and i'm definitely planning to do a reread so we have city of bones here um so the first three books i got paperback and the last three i got hardcover that's how they came in the set so i think i paid 45 for the set of six i think but um yeah we have city of bones which is book one we then have a city of ashes which is book two city of glass is book three if you guys can see then we have book four which is hardcover um city of fallen angels City of Lost Souls is book five. And then the final hefty chunky monkey. This book is hefty. How many pages is this? Like, is this over 800 pages? See, when I read them, I read them in ebook form. No, this is only 725. It's crazy how this is 725 pages. This is 800 pages, but yeah. Um, But yeah, then we have... City of Heavenly Fire. So I'm excited. I also own Red Scrolls of Magic already on my bookshelf. I have that, but I haven't read it yet. So I definitely want to binge read the entire like series of books in order. So I'm gonna work that out um and figure that out. Okay, so the next few books are going to be books that I got for reviews, for blog tours, from um publishers and things like that. So the first one I have is Last Girls by Dimitra Bodowski. This is why their world ends, and it's kind of like dystopian in a sense so we have that for a blog tour that i actually have to be doing for the month this month so i have to read this book then we have another one that i got from jean bookner so that i got from jean bookner for a tour this all one also i did read this one gave it i think a three and a half um it's lark's labyrinth by kathy cash spellman i do plan to reread it because i do want to reread and annotate um th this this book is hefty um it's almost 700 pages <laughs> but um here it is it's it's a mystery it deals with the cia and the neo-nazis the vatican and it has to do with the spear that um pierced the side of jesus basically and there's this woman named oh my god kate kate yeah kate and her daughter's name is lark and her sister and it's action-packed it's drama filled it's crazy but um i liked it enough i do want to reread and annotate the second time around that i read it but i read it quickly for the review that i had to do but we had that um along with that the author did send this in the mail she sent me a little card 
with a C on it with her name. Um, and it was a very long thank you letter. So I thought that was awesome. And I like little notes and authors take the time to actually like write me a personalized note. And this was like front and back type of thing. So hair and hair. Um, and then also I got a bookmark, which I did laminate. So it's a signed bookmark um, for Lark's Labyrinth. So there it is. It's signed. And there is the author there. So that was awesome for me. I really enjoyed that. Um, then I have Nowhere But Here by Katie McGarry. I enjoy Katie McGarry's writing. I think her writing is so cute and adorable and I love reading it. Um, she's probably one of the YA romance authors that I really enjoy reading because I find that they're cute, fluffy, and really pull me into the story and um, I end up loving the characters. So I enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to enjoy this, sorry. And I did get this in my Jean Buckner Storytellers box. Can't honestly remember which one, but I got this one. And um, yeah, I can't wait to read this. So we have that. Then we have this book, which is called Confessions of a Sheba Queen by Autumn Bar Bardo. Um, it's a romance. It deals with the mythology. On here, it says erotica mythology. I'm not really sure. But, um, yeah, it deals with a, 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 a djinn, right? Yeah, a djinn, half-human daughter of Bilquis. Um, and I've heard about Bilquis before. From mythology and stuff like that especially from um i watch supernatural like so i enjoy supernatural and um american gods i've heard about bill quest so yeah apparently king solomon is in this as well i don't know much about it i do need to read it obviously it was sent to me for review the author actually reached out to me so we have that another book that i got from um gene book nerd for a tour is the sweeney sisters by leanne dolan I honestly can't remember. This is an art copy. Um, the genre. I think this is contemporary. I think it's contemporary. Um, can't remember. I have a lot of books here that I'm trying to remember and it's super late. But we have the Sweeney Sisters right there. Um, following that, I have another book from Jean Booknerd. <laughs> it was from the Storytellers Box from this recent month, I believe. Um, it's, it's t it Takes Death to Reach a Star by Stu Jones and Garth. Worthington. Um, this is sci-fi, futuristic, dystopian type of story. It really sounds epic. If you haven't seen my unboxing, click the ad to go watch the unboxing to get more information on this book. But I'm excited to dive into this. Then I think the rest of these are going to be arcs. Yep, they're all arcs. So the first arc I have is The Palace of Silver by Hannah West. This is actually the third book in the Mysteria Chronicles, right? The Serial Chronicles, um, I did read this. I did enjoy it. I think this is an, a great YA fantasy. Um, this one follows four queens, and uh, it deals with the aftermath of things that took place in Realm of Ruins, which was the second book, which I did also receive an arc of. So, yeah, great book. It is YA fantasy. Um, following that, I go into middle grade, I guess. So, we have this middle grade novel called The Lost Wonderland Diaries by J. Scott Savage. Um, this comes out September 2020. And it sounds like it's going to be great. It just says Lewis Carroll's author of the classic book Alice in Wonderland secretly recorded the true story of his actual travels to Wonderland in four journals, which have been lost to the world until now. Celia and Tyrus discover the legendary lost diaries and fall into a portal. So, yeah, I'm excited for this. It looks like Shesire is like a mechanical cat. The white rabbit looks crazy and mean. So, yeah, I'm excited to dive into this. So we have that. Um, that's from Shadow Mountain Press. The next three are also from Shadow Mountain Press. This is Miracle Creek Christmas and it's contemporary romance, um, obviously. So we have that. I love the cover. This book comes out, when does it come out? September 2020 as well. So we have that. I have a historical fiction, which comes out September 2020 as well. Um, this one is The Paper Daughters of Chinatown. Um, it's based on a true story by Heather B. Moore. Here's what the cover looks like. I'm going to read the back. It says a powerful story about Donald Donaldina, I think that's how you say that, Cameron, and the other brave women who fought to help Chinese American women escape discrimination and slavery in the late 19th century in California. It sounded really good. Um, it is the life and work of Donna Linda Cameron. And um, it is based on historical records, diaries, newspaper articles, accounts, government documentation. And um, it says each chapter has accompanying historical notes about the author. 
So yeah, at the beginning of each chapter, there's information from the actual person. The actual character, um, Donnelly the Cameron. So yeah, I'm excited for this. I'm not really into a lot of historical fictions, but um, I figured this would be a nice one to try out. Then we have another one from them, Brass Carriages and Glass Hearts. It's a steampunk, steampunk Cinderella by Nancy Campbell Allen. She writes a lot of steampunk retellings of um, some of those classic stories, Rapunzel, um beauty and the beast i've read and things like that so we have this one this comes out it was supposed to come out in august i think it was pushed back but um yeah i think it's i don't know if it's still coming out in august or not but yeah so we have this this is definitely a cinderella retelling yeah just making sure this one is specifically Cinderella, yeah. So it's the fourth book in the multi-volume series. Each book retells a familiar um, fairy tale steampunk set in the 19th century UK setting. It's th they're all standalone books, but it's a companion series. Um, this one is a retelling of Cinderella, and this is Enemies to Lovers. So we here for it. I like steampunk. I'm excited for that. Almost done. Um, then we have a... Is this middle grade? YA. No, it's YA. This is the second book, right? Yes, to a duology. Um, so the first one is Bone Charmer. I haven't read that. I'll be reading it. But I have The Bone Thief by Brianna Shields here. Got it for review. This comes out this month on the 19th, so I got to read this one too. <laughs> right. Um, so here's all the information. It's, it, now, the thing that bugs me out. So on the arc, it says the 19th, but on the paper, it says the 26th. So I'm not sure exactly when it comes out, but it's the second and last book in the Bone Trauma Duology. So we have that. Okay, and lastly, I received another book from Goodreads through Giveaway, um, and it's going to be this arc of Race, Race the Sands by Sarah Beth Durst. I have her um, Queens of Renthea series on ebook. I haven't read it yet, um, but yeah, this is going to be YA Fantasy, if, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I'm assuming this is YA fantasy. Doesn't really say on here, but I'm interested to get into it. Again, I did win this on Goodreads, so oh, that is so nice. I don't really know what it's about. Yes, it's an epic standalone fantasy, um, and it introduces an imaginative world in which a pair of strong and determined women risk their lives battling injustice, corruption, and deadly enemies in their quest to become monster racing champions. So, yes, that is interesting. I didn't know it was standalone. I thought it was going to be part of a series, but I'm always here for a standalone. Oh, and this is over 500 pages. So I could definitely throw this into some topple. We'll see. But that is it, you guys. All the books that I got between March and April that I'm ready to finally put away on my bookshelves. This video may not be up to par, but I'm still going to post it. Yes, you guys can see my bookshelves. I have three behind me and then two in front of me. My two smaller ones are in front of me. Everything, I like I said, I switched my room around. So I need to organize everything. That shelf here is looking a little crazy. This shelf right here belongs to my son. That's all of his books. So yeah, I was going to organize tonight, but I'm not. It is currently... Yeah, it's, it's, it's not time, so I'm going to go relax because I'm a little tired. not sure if you guys can tell, but I wanted to make this video today because I can't do it tomorrow because I have other videos to make tomorrow. So, <laughs> that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, rating, commenting, and subscribing. And if you want to see anything specific, any book reviews, any video ideas, let me know. What did you guys purchase for the month of March and April? What are you looking to get for the month of May? Let me know. We love books here. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.